Hey, hey, hey. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, Mr. Lee. Uh oh, is that Alderman David Moore in the building too? Look, we got the uh oh, we got the the Black Power Alderman. Uh oh, we got the we. Now you be careful, man. You know they call you a troublemaker. You look, and then we got Alderman Scott in the building. Alderman Scott, we got to save my industry, man. You see, they going hard. So, but. Uh, Huh? So, but the thing is, I want us all to be good. So, anyway, I'm going to stop. I'll circle back. You know, just let me know, sir. Okay. G Rick. That's your alderman? That's one of your constituents. You know, he's one of the, he's a member of. Whip, sit down, Greg. Okay. Oh. Babe, can you, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Can you let them know we have about 200 flags, so if anybody wants these little ones, they can have them there for free. We got them. I mean, I'll have somebody pass them out. Okay. Greg, she's going to announce them. So when she announces it, I'm going to tell you to stand up. It's interesting to watch all these people that be so disrespectful to carry on a regular basis mm -hmm. to now act like they won't be there. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> See that lady on the right? Mm -hmm. She does every, those two on the end. Mm -hmm. are the ones. all the time? Really? Yes, they have walked out, made sure she doesn't have a quorum, the whole thing. They should have brought chicken, man. Take it easy, man. Not now. See, y'all be acting funny. Y'all like black people don't want no chicken. Chicken sauce. <laughs> it's not too late to come join us. It's not too late to come join us. Come on down, join the celebration join the ceremony as we raise the black flag yes you did see dr world in the building some of everybody is here i'm telling y'all it's the thing to be this is the place to be they go alderman mitts right there hey alderman <laughs> Hey, hey, Alderman. That's the one who said he wasn't sure he was going to vote for Kerry for president. Him right there. He said he wasn't sure if he was going to vote for for president. And turn off your phones, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. So can everyone please stand? I got the flag if y'all need it. Yeah, I'm gonna try to direct as best I can since we don't have the band, okay? <laughs> now if you heard W B O E in yesterday, May said that I could not sing. <laughs> 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 so I'm 
ready? Yes. Lift every voice and sing Till earth and heaven ring Ring with the harmony Of liberty Let our rejoicings rise High as a listening skies Let it Sound loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song full of the faith that the darkness has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the presence has brought us. Facing the rising sun of a new day begun, let us march on till victory is won. You did all right, Richard. You can sing. You can sing. <laughs> Stony the road we try. Hey man, I pledged. We had to learn that he's a signal. So we had to. And Eighteen. Good evening, everyone. This is just so wonderful. I am so pleased to 
I can't talk anymore, Carrie. <laughs> <laughs> to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yes. No. Everybody knows that. No. Everybody knows that Dr. Woodson was the second black person to earn a PhD from Harvard, the first being Dr. W. E. Du Bois. We all know that. Right? Yep. Yes. Okay. So in the Wabash Y, that was a place where people came to uh, live, they had rooms and so forth. So Dr. Woodson met some like-minded people. And they were sitting around in the cafeteria and decided that they needed to have an organization that totally focused on the history of black people doing research. So in the cafeteria of the Wabash Choir in 1915, Dr. Wilson and his colleagues established the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History, right here in Chicago. So Dr. Woodson relocated to Washington, D.C. in 1916 and created the first African-American academic journal, the Journal of Negro History and Life. And so the organization began to evolve and expand. And by 1926, the association decided as a programmatic strategy to create what we know as African-American History Month, which is called Negro History Month in 1926. So we're here today really standing on the shoulders of some great history. Now people always used to say, why did Dr. Woodson pick February the shortest month and why is it only a week? Well, my answer is, what did you do? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and we know now that we study our history 365 years. We, we know that, right? Yeah. So here's Dr. Woodson and the association. <laughs> so while all of this is going on, in 1914, the Honorable Marcus Mosiah Garvey established the Universal Negro Improvement Association. And he came to this country to hook up with Booker T. Washington to find out about the Tuskegee Institute that Booker T. had created so he could take it back to Jamaica. But when Garvey got here, Booker T. had passed. So Bar Garvey was in Harlem and stayed here in this country, and it's a very long story. But all of this history was going on at the same time. After World War I, the Garvey movement began to expand and they had their first international convention of the Negro peoples of the world 
And if you can imagine 25,000 people for the first international convention of the Universal Negro Improvement Association in Madison Square Garden with African people from all over the world. Can you imagine that? In 1925, excuse me, 1920, August 1st, and they met for 30 days and stayed in black people's houses all over New York City. So it was at that convention that the origin of the red, black, and green emerged because the song was created in the 1900s that became very popular called Coon. And they said that everybody had flags but the Coon. Hmm. So this kind of resonated with black thinking people. So by 1920, the, or the members of the UNIA decided that black people needed a flag because we were not Coon. So this was reaction to the song that had been established in 1920. Can I get a witness? Mm -hmm. Are y'all following me? Yes. yes. So after World War I and the League of Nations were established and nations were establishing flags throughout the world, the Universal Negro Improvement Association and African Communities League, who considered themselves not just an organization, they considered themselves a provisional government. And so in that context, on August 13th, in the program, it says the 31st. Well, that's when the flag was unfolded. But they adopted the flag in the 30-day convention, August 13th, 1920. Are y'all with us? Yes. So, what, you know how things are, and I can't talk all day long. Yes, I you can. Barbara getting ready to come up. Please, <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> right. <laughs> like, okay. but I don't know if you really know when that flag was dropped, the red, black, and the green, the red standing for the blood that black people had shed as a people, the black standing for who we are, people of African descent and the green standing from the continent that African people emerged from. And they rolled that flag out, didn't nobody pay attention. So 100 years later, we're at the Water Reclamation District getting ready to put up the red, black, and green. <coughs> so sometimes it takes a long time for things to catch on. Yeah. You can get a witness on that. But the important of this moment today is that we do not forget our history right. and that we recognize our ancestors, that we recognize <coughs> our ancestral right. contributions. So Barbara Darby had a wife, Amy Ashwood Darby, who helped write words to this song. So I don't know if you want to do these words now or when you go outside, Barbara. Do the program the she told you. Do you want these words to be spoken now? Okay, let's speak the words to the flag. Because when we go outside, it's be too cold to be standing out there trying to be black. <laughs> Y'all got a witness? Yeah. So, these words are the words of the red, black, and green. And by the way, after 1957, the Ghana's independence, during the independence movement and African nations now were moving towards independence, many of these nations adopted the colors of red, black, and green. So if you travel around the world in African nations, you will find some semblance of the red, black, and green in the black, sometimes yellow. Y'all with me? Hey, Solomon, how you doing? teaching up here when you come with us. Okay, here we go. Here's to the flag of mine, the red, black, and green. Hopes in its future bright, Africa has seen. Here to the red of it, great nations shall know of it in time to come. Red blood shall flow of it, historians shall write of it, great flag of mine. Here to the black of it, 400 million back of it, whose destiny depends on it, the red, black, and green of it, old flag of mine. 
give to the men and women of it, the grain of it, shall dream of it, face shot the shells of it, maiden shall sing of it, waving so high. Here to the whole of it, colors brought and told of it, pleased is my soul with it, regardless of what is told of it, thanks to God for giving it, great flag of mine. Now, so this flag is 100 years in 1920, 20. so the flag represents history that we need to study and pass on to our young generation so they don't think that this flag belongs to the people engaged in anti-African behavior. Uh, Black power. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. I'm Alderman Chris Tellia Farrell, 29th Ward. We will be taking pictures of our president and our vice president with the flag as they are handing it off, handing it off, I swear I can talk, <laughs> handing it off to, of course, our operating engineer who will be responsible for making sure that the flag goes up. And let me just reiterate the significance of this. This is such an auspicious occasion. Even I myself did not have the appreciation for it that I am coming to have in understanding first and foremost that this is the centennial year of this flag and then the significance of what this flag stands for and the fact that we get to hand this down to our children. I am a Sunday school teacher who have young people who sometimes don't even like to talk about black history because to them it means just reiterating and reliving a slavery experience. 
it does not reflect really the pride that should be instilled in this Black History Month. So this is really, really significant to me as the administrator and the person over our affirmative action program, as the person who, of course, is responsible for teaching children. This is really significant. So I thank every one of you, every department head, every employee, every guest, for coming to celebrate this moment with us. And it is really historic that we are the first government agency. That's right. To do that. Yeah. yeah. All these black girls are the first. Also, the first organization to establish an affirmative action program. So how about that? Yeah. There it is. And then, of course, our elected officials will come into that photo 